Hi, I'm Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our March Premium Box. This month's box is all about charcoal. We're going to introduce you to a new medium, go over how to use it, and I'll share some tips and tricks on how to render form and make things look more three-dimensional. Let's get into it! For our surface this month, we have a custom cotton pad from the Arnhem 1618 company. This bright white pad is super absorbent, has a great texture, and works well with a variety of mediums. Our next item is going to be a set of Progresso Woodless Graphite Pencils from the Koenor Company. This set includes an HB, 2B, 4B, and 6B pencil. 6B is going to be our darkest in our set, and HB is going to be the lightest. Let's grab our HB pencil and talk about rendering form. I'll start by creating a flat circle, and then go in and tone half of it. I'm going to be adding some graphite to any area that won't be hit with light. Next, I'll go in and establish our core shadow, and this is what really gives us that sense of form and three-dimensionality. Already, we can start to see that flat circle turn into a three-dimensional sphere. With our base values established, I'll go in with our 2B pencil, clean up those outlines, and darken up that core shadow. I'm also going to go in and give the sphere a drop shadow, and this will help to make it look like it's sitting on a three-dimensional plane. Now, I love the texture of the Arnhem pad, as it gives it a little bit of grit, but if you're looking for a smoother transition, you can just take your finger and smudge some of that graphite. To clean up our sketch, let's grab the Faber-Castell Extra Large Kneaded Eraser in this month's box, and pinch off a piece. Kneaded erasers are great because you can shape them into any way you need, and they're a good way to clean up a sketch and add highlights to a piece. I'm going to use it right on that bright spot so we can really emphasize the highlight on our sphere. Let's do this one more time, but let's use a cylinder instead of a sphere. I'll go in and establish our tone just like before, adding a little bit to that top left side. Next I'll go in and add our core shadow using that darker 2B, and this time we're going to use the underside of the cylinder as our shadow area. I'll also add a small outline to emphasize the ground. Our only real difference between these two shapes is going to be that turning edge. The turning edge is just something that allows you to depict how the light bends around an object. Our pencil set has a great value range, so you can depict both light and dark objects, and they look great on that Arnhem pad because of that texture. Our next item is a custom 6 cent of the Derwent Tinted Charcoal Pans. These pans offer the grit and texture of a charcoal, but with the control of a water medium. For our colors, we have dark moss, thistle, burnt embers, glowing embers, white, and mountain blue. Let's grab the brush included in this month's box so we can familiarize ourselves with those Derwent pans. I've gone ahead and swatched out our colors, and I think the thing that I like the most about the tinted charcoal is the grain that the pigment has. Let's use these to revisit the abstract floral design that we did in January. Depending on how we hold our brush, we can achieve a variety of marks. Here, we can create a simple leaf by using very light to heavy pressure. And depending on how much water you have on your brush, will reveal a bit of the texture of that Arnhem pad. Using just the tip, we can go in and correct any lines or smooth out color. For thin lines, the trick is just to let that brush barely graze the page. Let's do another leaf, starting with that light pressure and then pushing down and slightly rotating our brush to create that shape. What's nice about the charcoal pans is they will stay active for a bit until they dry, so you can always push that pigment around to create consistent areas of color. For the petals of our flower, let's explore the different shapes our brush can make. Using the full length of our brush, we can create a petal in a single stroke, or we can use that tip to make smaller side petals that wrap around the edges. Now I'm not trying to be too realistic here, this is more of an abstract representation, really just exploring the different shapes that our brush can make. By layering our white charcoal, we can build those petals to create a more three-dimensional effect. And by waiting for those layers to dry before going back in, we can achieve much darker colors. If you want to learn more about floral illustration, make sure to check out that January video. Our next item is going to be a Pit Pastel pencil from the Faber-Castell company. This is a great tool to lay in a foundational sketch, 
as it just kind of blends into the background when we go over with our dormant pans. I'll start by sketching in a circle and some other abstract shapes. Last month we talked a lot about technical drawing, which is really rigid, so take the opportunity to make some fun, loose shapes. We just want to make sure that they're large enough because we're going to go in and make these flat shapes look more three-dimensional. I'll start by filling in our shapes with a very thin wash. This is going to allow us to get the most consistent color and help them stand off the page a little bit more. By fanning out that color with more water, we can get more subtle transitions, as well also to help reduce brush strokes. While we can always layer a color to make areas darker, a fun technique to use is to start with one side of an object with that darker pigment, and then fan out that color with more water. This will help create a subtle transition and make it so you can blend between two colors. Because the derwent pans are semi-staining, they will reactivate a little bit as we go over them with water. This will help to create softer transitions and allow you to mix colors. Now, just like with our woodless graphite pencils, we can create areas of tone, which will help create a more three-dimensional effect on our shapes. Depending on how well you blend out that transition of tone, you're gonna get different effects. So if you keep a nice crisp line between your sections, it's gonna look a little bit more rigid and more dynamic of a shape. Compare the dark moss shapes that I'm doing to the glowing ember sphere, and you can see what I'm talking about. We can also attribute form by thinking in terms of light and dark. Dark is always going to push into the background, and light areas are going to pull to the foreground. By playing with this dynamic, you can create some really interesting shapes. It's really surprising just how much form can be attributed just by thinking in lights and darks. If you prefer to work in more opaque layers, you can always mix in a little bit of that white pan with any of the other Derwent charcoal pans to create a nice tint. I like to use the white as a highlight method in order to make our shapes look even more three-dimensional. Now, building form with our Derwent pans does take some time, so make sure to let your layers dry fully so that you can build that color more easily. Let's grab the final item in our box, the Pit Charcoal Pencil from the Faber-Castell Company. Now one of my favorite things to do with charcoal pencils is a continuous line drawing. You'll need a simple reference photo for this. I'm going to be using a portrait, but you're welcome to use something of an object or a flower, whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Now the point of a continuous line drawing is to try and create a recognizable image without lifting your pencil too much. I like to go around the outside and get my major shapes established, and then go in and work on those smaller details. By working with a lighter pressure in the beginning, I can always go back in and darken areas up later. With my face shape established, I'll go in and work on the brow ridge, focusing on those eyebrows and the socket, and kind of build out the details of the face. Working in a more free and less structured style like this is kind of the opposite of the technical drawing that we did last month. It is a great way to warm up and to develop your observational skills. In order to create the illusion of form like we were talking about earlier in the video, I'm going to go in and smudge certain areas. I'll be focusing on the temples, the brow ridge, and the sides of the face in order to create an illusion of form. Going back in with our charcoal pencil and a little bit more pressure this time, I'll go in and darken a few areas like the eyes, underneath the nose, and add some details. This is really when you can correct anything that you might have noticed in your original sketch that didn't quite look right. We're not trying to go for a photorealistic reproduction, we're just trying to observe and create something that's similar enough to be recognizable. We can also use a light pressure to shade in areas like the lips, but try to use that minimally as it'll take away from that line style. That's it for this month's video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure to use hashtag SketchboxMarch. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.